My bad, my bad again. I made the same mistake. I forgot to turn on my mic. Wow, it's not that easy doing live streaming, huh? Okay, now you guys can hear me. We're gonna start with the SEL course. So I'm gonna reach back to my, my, bad, my slide. Bad. Okay. Yeah, um. Okay, now, quick introduction about myself. This is me, this is my link. Um. Go ahead and view it if you want. I do a lot of SEO stuff myself for my startup for the past 10 years. I will demonstrate now. Um, if I did this before, uh, I, 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 okay, let's just switch this. Okay. Now, this is my article, which is ranked number one on Google. If you search the keyword, set up virtual concert. That's one. Okay. Now, if you search for um, make money virtual concert, this is my article again on the first on the first page. Okay, and this is also my article which I wrote for this IQ Mac, which is a concert magazine. I'm in the business of doing concerts, live streaming concerts. Originally, I was doing um, ticketing for live concerts. Then I moved to live streaming. All right. So, so, so you can see that these are a few high-ranking um, works that I've done. All right. Now, more than uh, other than that, I'm just gonna show you the rest. Some are not live anymore. Uh, let me see this one. Okay. Um, easiest sport to learn the keyword. I used to have one star called coach.co. If you search easiest sports to learn previously, you will see this blog post here. And I also did a few, a bunch of other old SEO 1.0 um, searches um, 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 ranking for this fantasy model GP. My previous startup, which I saw was ranked first. A fantasy world cup 2014, we are ranked first below the ad and so forth. Okay, so yeah. How to make money from virtual concerts, which I just so showed you. I'm ranked here and here. Okay, so I'm not talking talking crap here. I'm talking about real stuff, how to get your website to rank high on Google search results. Now, without further ado, let's go and dig in into how are we going to go about this. Okay. Um, let's start. Okay, you're gonna get uh, this slide that I'm gonna share with you guys right at the end of this course. I will share you the link to the Google Drive, to my Google Drive. You get a lot of bunch of cool stuff for these slides other than just my slides. These are all, this, this is actually a template that you can use it for any kind of uses that you want. Okay, yes, like over 200, so 300 slides in fact. Okay, the reason why I'm using PPT because it's very common. It's more, much more commonly used than Keynote and other formats, okay? Okay, now let's start by giving a brief introduction of what SEO 2.0 is about. How do you understand SEO? Now, I always tell my students, which I used to pitch, I used to train uh, SEO students, think of Google as a person. Okay, don't think of Google as a search engine. Think of them him as a person that you would want him to tell other people about your website. So if you're a person like Mr. Google that you get so much information about other people's websites all over the world, and your job is to tell another person about another person's website okay what would you want to tell how would you want to tell it what kind of information would make you want to tell let's say my website to john if john is asking from you or asking from mr google hey i want to buy running shoes so the question you're going to ask from john is probably going to be like what kind of running shoes uh you're going to find the most reputable um or online, for example, um, store to who, who sell uh, running shoes, basically. 
and you find those most popular one, probably the most affordable ones, uh, one that has the best rating, uh, most trustworthy, uh, more engaged with people, more traffic, etc. So you see uh, what, what I'm trying to get at? If you put yourself or put Google as a person, you kind of think, okay, in order for Google to tell other people about my website, I have to be this, I have to be that, I have to be reputable, I have to be trustworthy, I have to be popular, I have to be have a lot of content online to educate people about buying shoes, for example. So when you get the idea, if you want to tell um, Google to, to index or to rank your website high, you want to put that in your in your mind that Mr. Google is uh, Google is actually a person. Okay, having that in mind, I want you to think about that all the time that you when you're trying to do SEO in your business. Okay, um, it is SEO is actually uh has to be embedded in your brain. It's not a one time thing that you do and turn on and off your your your, your the switch in your brain whenever you want to do SEO. SEO should be continuous is a continuous practice that you do in your company or in your startup whatever you do whatever content that you write whatever posting you have on instagram on twitter on flickr whatever uh, uh, um, messages that you want to send your your you have to think of seo because it's very important that way it's you chances of you ranking high on google search will be higher okay now Let's compare what's SEO 1.0 and SEO 2.0. SEO 2.0 is also called social SEO. It is a new way of how Google actually ranks websites. The old way I showed you just now was very much based on keywords here. Focus was on keywords. What keywords that you use and Google will find what other websites which actually has uh, have the, the, the specific keyword and they try to match it that way okay now in this era it's not so much of that it's more focused on the context okay for example book and artist okay does it mean a book and an artist or you want to book meaning booking you want to book an artist so Google has to know the context. What are you getting at? Are you trying to talk about a book, book, as in the something that you read, an artist as in a painter, or booking an artist as in booking artist, performing artist? So that's what I mean by context. Keywords meaning it doesn't care what you're trying to talk about booking. Book as in a book or booking someone, a booking a professional service. Okay, that's the important part that you need to know the differentiate between SEO 1.0 and 2.0. Second is the backlink. It all boils down to backlink. Those were the days that you were paying people or uh, pleading people, begging people to backlink you, your website, uh, backing, backlinking their website to your website. I'm sorry. Okay, they want, you want many, uh, many websites, other websites to link back to your website. Those were the days. Now, today, it's more into content. It's not so much only into, sorry. Okay, I'm just gonna check whether my live stream is working or not. So backlink is still important. I'm not saying it's not, but Google also put more emphasis on quality content, okay? Content, not just articles and posts and text, it's also videos. YouTube, it's also uh, images, um, Instagram, uh, uh, Pinterest, Flickr. It's also maps, your company on Google Maps. Remember, okay, content, um, compelling content, useful content. Google is very much powered by AI right now. So the AI is getting smarter and smarter and you could differentiate between good quality content and bad quality content. As an example of good quality content is high um, content, long content. An article which has more than 500 words, 1,000 words, 3,000 words. Now, 
going back to my article which was ranking very high I wrote this article and I wrote it uh, second week into the lockdown in France the COVID-19 lockdown virtual concert was very new to everybody so all the concerts uh, were cancelled so everybody is going online so people were got people got curious about how to do how to create a virtual concert I took the liberty to write this article it's very long and very technical I show diagrams lots of screenshots lots of detailed tutorials step-by-step -step, annotation stuff like that and this was in March um, yeah middle of March today is still ranked number one and I did not get any other websites to link to backlink to this article or to my website in fact the only website that actually links back to my website which is onecrowd.com is iq-mac which is this one which is this article actually okay they are the only website that's linking back to my website but still my so my website is now ranked number one for this keyword and also rank number one for uh, how to make how make money make money for virtual concert here okay so backlinks are still important but not that important anymore okay remember that so you want to go for good quality of content I'll show you later how to do it um, optimizing for links and ranking remember links backlinks etc um, that's not so true anymore now it's more optimizing for engagement likes followers um, number of uh, bounce rate how fast people look at your content and leave okay how many times people click on your article on or view your images okay I'll give you an example again here if I were to search for running shoes and I would just keep on going and going and going and search let's say um, let's just say I click on this link and not just me a lot of people actually go and went um, to click on this link every time they search the keywords uh, running shoes okay Google will know that hey uh, this keywords here uh, will be very, very very relevant with this runrepeat.com and chances are if a lot of people keep doing this this website will rank higher for this keyword running shoes okay that's how generally Google works now Google works not just by one ways two ways the algorithm uses multiple ways to to index or to rank websites that's one of the ways that you might want to put in mind okay now, now going back um, here focus on short tail keywords focus on long tail keywords now short tail keywords are like da -da -da, da -da. I just want to show you my previous uh, SEO exploits let me just go down here short tail two words fantasy moto GP that's it there's nothing not nothing left nothing else okay but now slowly it becomes more longer like long tail keywords is just forced to learn which is, has more keywords which which has which has more words inside okay another one let me try to show you to you um, I have a few more here than no, let me show you here um, okay okay it's one um, there are a few more I want to show you for example yeah Asian Cup manager yeah we are ranked somewhere here um, yeah here okay short keywords okay what's the difference between long tail and short tail keywords okay 
Let me show you here. This is the slide that I did for my previous SEO introduction course. Okay, so short tail keywords. Okay, short tail has very little words inside. A long tail keyword has more words inside like this. It's more specific. Nowadays, Google would index long tail keywords better than short tail keywords. During the days, the problem was people were trying to compete to be on the first page for very short tail keywords like this, which is get very difficult, very competitive, and very expensive. You have to pay a lot of money for ACO specialists to to keep on pushing your um, you know, website to be ranked high or on the first page when people search running shoes. Nowadays, it can be running shoes for kids, buy running shoes for kids, running shoes for kids in California, running shoes for kids and family, uh, where to buy running shoes for kids. It can be so many combinations of uh, long tail keywords. Okay, and Google actually do rank um, websites differently based on these different kind of long tail keywords. Okay, so that's how it works nowadays. They're focused on more of long tail keywords because there are more and more people going online and search or going on mobile using Google to search. I mean, isn't what we're currently doing every day? We search on Google everywhere we go, on a mobile, on a PC. So people tend to search more specific keywords nowadays. So that's the new trend. Hence, Google are adopting to that new trend. Lastly, SEO 1.0 focused on presence, reputation, integrity. Oh no, this is not true. Okay, less focused on presence, reputation, and integrity are less important for SEO 2.0. SEO 2, oh sorry, SEO 1.0. For SEO 2.0, these are more important. Okay, what do you mean by presence, reputation, and integrity? Presence will be like, how 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 much presence your website ha has across the internet? For example, do you have a Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, Twitch, whatever you have? It's very important because all this presence create a more um, a reputable, I guess, a website about you. Not just compared to a web website without having all that different mm, mentioning of your company's brand, for example, or um, social channels that you may be lack of. Reputation. How reputable uh, is your website? For example, do you, you don't really get um, negative articles about anything that you search. Whatever you search, I tend to be very positive. I mean, you, you tend to, I mean, even if there's someone trying to backstab you or creating fake news about you um you know usually they don't rank very high on google search only those good positive um information or content gets high on google search results okay that's what i mean by reputation integrity how integ how what's the integrity of your company or your website how google uh, knows uh, knows how trustworthy is your website which we'll look into that all right now okay now I'm gonna dig down into the, the, the details here now here are a few tricks tips and tricks that I would like to demonstrate to you which you could start doing immediately uh, to rank your website high on Google search now, uh, first thing, let me try. Okay, let me just show you. I'm gonna use my friend's website, which I'm actually actually helping. Um, um, I'm actually consulting. Okay, they they actually sell our uh, inv invisible braces for I don't know for you know, braces like metal braces. It is that they're actually doing doing invisible version. So when I search for white smile clear, you can see that the company actually appeared here on the right side here. See, so it gets a very high profile view when people search for specific keywords like that. Now, you see, uh, it, you can directly go to the company's um, direction. You can have website, uh, link to the website, etc., address, or so forth. So how do you get your company to be right on, on the right side here? That's the question I'm going to answer for you. Now, I used to have a friend. I actually have a friend. Uh, he's an Airbnb host, which became my friend in France. 
he's actually a professional driver. He's the uh, driver in his town called Kong. And let me see the Kong um, Taxi, for example. Okay, this is his company actually, but when I was in France, his website actually appeared here. Let me try Class V Premium. Maybe appear here. No? Okay. okay. Well, anyway, this is his website here. Okay, Class V Premium. Class V Premium Taxi. No. Anyway, it appeared here actually. So, how do you get your website to be on? here right here what you do is you go to google my business first link here click on it so this is the business uh, department or business um, feature or business whatever um, service by google you want to sign up for free it's free and you want to enter your company's information like this okay i will show you how to do it i'll show you the previous um my other website that i did okay i'm gonna go to google my business and i'm gonna log into my account uh, i'm in korea right now i just keep showing korean Okay, let's sign in. It's very important for you to do this so that Google will, you would be more, um, you would have a better reputation in the eyes of Google because this is the only one of the few ways that Google could verify that you are actually an authentic and legitimate business or a company operating from certain countries okay now this is mine lifecraft for example okay if you go to information this is where i enter all the information for my company okay your address your hours your phone number your your, your um, social media handles etc everything here now when you enter your address here what happened is Google actually tried to verify that you actually own your office, your company actually is exactly situated in that address. So what they do is they mail you a letter. Inside the letter, it contains a verification code. That code is supposed to come back to this business.google.com and enter that code. That way Google verified how you actually received that letter and you actually state you have a company there. And because you entered the code, so that's how Google can genuinely verify that, oh, you are in your real company, life is a real company because that letter reaches to you and you could you basically verify a company there that you own that address in that country. And of course, if you enter a, a domain name or website, so that links back to your company, which links back to the address. Now, if you're a company focusing on a very local business, for example, if you're um, selling running shoes, in the US or in France, and you do this, and your address is from France, and they will know that, hey, this website belongs to a company in France. So when I say something like, um, buy sh running shoes, excuse me, <coughs> France, your website should rank high, it should appear. Now, I'm not in France right now, okay? That's the point that they will, well, you, you, you get the idea. Okay. Now that's how Google can verify that company where, 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 where it actually belongs. Generally, Google will actually use Google maps like this, but still Google will tag that data, the information about your website, your company to, 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 to do its, um, algorithm, search engine algorithm. Okay. Other than that, you can actually upload a lot of photos on your um, this Google My Business service that you have here. And people come in and take a look of your photos and you tend to get more traffic from there as well. Okay, now if you go to maps.google.com, you can find my company there. 
at that address. We actually base in session F. Um, okay, let's try left corral. In Paris, so, excuse me, here. So this is the entire station F. There are like 1,000, excuse me, 1,000 startups um, situated inside here. It's the world's largest startup hub. So this is us. So we're here. So the letter actually reached us, um, it actually entered it here. Okay, that's how it works. Okay. Oh, well, the thing is we're not really focusing just in France, we're focusing across the world. So still, it is a very good way for, for Google to verify our company, that we are a legitimate startup. Okay, go ahead and do that. Open this Google My Business account, go and enter the information, upload the photos, upload your videos. You can upload videos actually. Um, get reviews, you know, get people to review your company, you know. Uh, your, your location of your company. You can even upload products and services. For example, if you're an online store, you can upload your products and link it back to your website. That's how great this thing is, okay? Remember, upload products and services on this, your Google My Business page and link it back to your website, all right? That's first tip that I'd like to share with you. Very important. Now. Some people ask about having website with um, country top level domain name. For example, .fr for France, .co .uk, um, um, .sg for Singapore, .au for Australia, so forth. Is it important for you to actually own a, a, a country top level domain name like that? It depends. The answer is to you is that it depends if you're trying, if you're doing a very localized business. If your business is just in France or if your business is just in Canada.ca, you will want to have a .ca domain name. You want to have a .uk domain name if you're only based in UK. So if you have a very localized business that you want to get more online traffic, so if someone at google.co.uk, I believe, the local Google and the search for running shoes, for example, and chances are Google will rank, uh, if you want to say on a buy running shoes, will rank those localized website higher, okay, than other foreign websites. Now, if you do, if you put that your your country domain, country top level domain name, in your Google My Business here, that further validates that your company is based in that country, for whatever country that you're at. For example, if I'm based in Paris in France, if I enter my domain name to be livecrowd.fr, for example, then it shows that my company is a very localized company, and .fr. I, I, my website should rank pretty high when someone searches something from France, from Google France, which is google.google.fr. Google .fr. Okay, that's how generally it works to lo when, you, when when Google is trying to rank localized uh, website for for, lo for local country. Okay, so do you want to get a local domain name? Yeah, if you have a very localized business, go ahead. If you want to, if you have a large business, regional business that you want to get a country domain name for all those countries you're at, sure, go ahead and do that too. Now, of course, there'll be a lot of work, but what some people do is that they redirect their country domain name to, for example, uh, if you are from in France.fr, that you redirect it to your website, which is .com slash fr, which is your French version of your website, okay? Or if your um, um, Korea would be like ko.kr, I think, that um, language, what they call abbreviation, translation abbreviation. So if I have pexels.co.kr, I could redirect it to pexels.com slash the uh, language abbreviation, which is Co. Co. Underscore care. I think I forgot. Okay, which 
presents the website in Korean language. So that could be a way that you can play around with domain names. Okay, now that's about country level domain names. Now, what's the other thing that I'd like to share is that, okay, okay, I'm here. So I'm gonna go back here. I want you to go and check out Pinterest.com. Uh, I think you might know Pinterest. You've seen a lot of them uh, when you search online. Okay, I'm gonna lock in. I'm just gonna show you my experience. Now, this website is not actually very old. Come on. Great. All right. Oh, great. Um, I need to remember my password. All right, we're in. Okay. So when um, COVID hits, um, we actually, well, all of our business was devastated by COVID because we were doing advanced ticketing. So because of that, there's nothing much to be done. So I was thinking that why don't I, well, we just go and have a, a list of all the canceled and postponed musical events across the world. And in fact, that we did that for almost two weeks. It's a hell of a work. Um, let me show you, where's that link here? So we're competing with people like or rollingstones.com, billboard.com. They have their list, we have our list. And I'm just trying to be, we want to be, we want to be the best list in the world that lists down all the cancel and postpone events, the date and the location, etc., etc and the link back to the Twitter account, Mariah Carey, or for example, Mariah Carey's uh, Twitter account, Instagram account to verify all this information. And we actually spent two weeks, almost two weeks, two of us doing this, all right? And what happened was that although we just have this list, we also created an infographic for this. Now, I'm gonna show you the infographic. I'm gonna, there's a reason why I'm explaining this to you. Okay, just bury me first. So we created this infographic, which we updated this, the, the, the chart, this chart on a daily basis. So the chart actually grew from very short all the way to very long. So which one's the newest? I think probably, uh, I'm not sure, this one. So the chart or the graph, infographic grew and grew and grew. And we have a lot of versions of it because we keep on updating it. See, updated on March 18. And what happened was we when we did when we did this, uh, when we did this, uh, Google obviously indexed Pinterest and we we actually got ranked pretty high. When you search for canceled concerts or something like that during the COVID time, during the uh, peak of COVID, we were ranked on the first page. We didn't rank so high up uh, like um, Billboard or Rolling Stones, of course, because they're such big websites, um, we actually rank below them. But nonetheless, it creates a lot of presence. We, we create a lot of presence on the website. It create a lot of, um, um, I guess, um, credibility when we did all this, because we, we continue on to create fresh and fresh content. Another point is that Google loves fresh content. I repeat, Google loves fresh content. If you have content which updates itself occasionally that's really good in the eyes of google google like fresh new updated content which you which you know because all the time when you search for something online google will tend to want to rank fresh new content higher than those older ones including videos like youtube videos and so forth okay fresh content is important okay so we we, we basically updated all our contents in on a daily basis Updated here on Pinterest and also on Flickr.com. Now, here's the cool part about Flickr and Pinterest. Okay, Pinterest allows you to link your whatever image that you have on Pinterest back to your website. Now, let me show you here. One crowd, when I click on it, it links back directly to that article which I just showed you, which contains a readable page 
of and linkable page um, of all the cancelled events, which all links to the source of information of that event. See? Okay? From an image to an article. So obviously Google recognizes this and tend to then rank us pretty high up. Now if I were to log into Flickr and um, uh, forgot the password. Um, shoot. Anyway, let me just try this. Okay, here. Okay, me, photo stream. We did the same thing on Flickr. So we posted our infographics. Where was it? Hey. Oh, this is live crowd. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Use one craft. Oh, which I forgot the password. Okay. Come on. Oh, okay. Well, anyway. Um, Okay, I have live crowds. Okay, saved. So, going back, photo stream. Okay, so when you create an image or uploaded an image on um, Flickr, you can link it back to your website. Look at that here. So, when I click on it, it's this and this. Are related because this is an article explaining this. This presents a very simple view to understand the difference between public and private live streaming. So when I click on this, I actually will be redirected to this article that we wrote about that specific topic. All right. So go ahead and upload or uh, create. Um, graphical content for your website. It can be anything. It can be a table comparison. It can be an infographic. Anything that you find that you think will be you, that, that your customers or people who are you attract targeting would find useful. For example, differences of six live streaming platforms. See that? We compare point by point uh, between YouTube and all the rest. So things like that. Um, you can have what else? A lot of stuff. A lot. Of, uh, don't just think of content as in article or story or text. Think of images, videos on YouTube, for example. That's also one way to create more SEO juice to link back to your website. Okay, remember that. All right. Anything else? These are the two websites I'd like to recommend you to start using, which people don't really use. In fact, also just to summarize uh, again, use Flickr, use Google My Business, use uh, the other one was uh, Pinterest. Okay, it's Pinterest.com. All right, just three tools or secret tools that people don't really use that often will be very advantageous for you when you are trying to do your SEO work, All right? Now, another tool I'd like, uh, like to introduce to you is the, um, let's go turn here, the Google Search Console. This is the first step for you to get Google to find out about all the pages, the images, the URLs that you have for your website. 
it is not mandatory to do this. Okay, without doing this, Google will still know your website eventually. Okay, now if you search Google Search Console, if you go to here, click on it, you will be redirected to um, okay, here, like this, something like this. So I'm gonna, okay, I don't have any property right now. So okay, I used to have one domain name, Kudura. Uh, doesn't go in because I did not verify it. Okay, now first you have to do the verification. You enter your domain name right here. Google will ask you to verify it so that Google could confirm that you are the owner of this domain which you need to do by going back to your registrar, uh, enter some code uh, called uh, DNS code into your domain name, and then from there you'll get verified. You have to do this with your hosting company, your hosting provider. Now, once you've done that, you have to submit a sitemap. So what is a sitemap? Sitemap, okay. A sitemap is a map that uh, is, is a map about your website. Okay, think of it that way. Okay, a sitemap, as the name implies, is a map about your website. So what how it looks like is this. Excuse me. Just an example. or my website XML. So if your website is powered by WordPress, you should be able to see something like this. This is generated by a plugin inside WordPress like that. So it basically um, um, structured out all the links, uh, URLs, posts, pages, images that you have of your website in um, this kind of um, documents we call XML documents or XML sitemaps. So for example, you see all these links are here. What are the key benefits of using white smile clear for example? If you click on it, it will actually bring you to the website. See that? Okay. So 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 XML sitemap basically lists down all the URLs and pages and posts that you have for your website. Now, what you do is you actually submit this link to Google so that Google knows all the pages and URLs for your website, as simple as that. So you need to tell Google, hey Google, these are my thousands of pages that I have on my website. Then Google will store it in his database and then he will know, okay, you have this page, you have that page, and this page contains this information and the other page content that information that's how google will uh, will be able to rank your website on her or his search results all right okay that's how it works so you have to go back in to google search console enter this domain name verify it then you have to submit this link to google it's under a section called um sitemaps it's very simple just Copy and paste, not this, in fact, um, you, okay, okay, it should be something like this. Always try to name it sitemap.xml, like that. Copy this and bring it to your, uh, where was it, here, and paste it and press the button submit, okay. If you don't have a WordPress website, how do you generate a sitemap like this? You just go and use this one, xml-sitemaps.com. It's an XML sitemaps generator. So what you do is you just enter your website domain name, for example, I'll enter this, click start. What it does is it actually crawls and go and search all the pages and URLs that you might have for your website and put them into an XML file. Okay, so it takes some time. We're just gonna wait for this. Now, xmlsitemaps.com only um, lists down up to a certain number of, of links, not unlimited. Okay, so that's the bad part about this 
um, website. But anyway, you can get a software to do that. There's a software called um, XML Sitemap Generator software. I think I've downloaded downloaded that before. Uh, it's free, and you can generate as many as uh, sitemap documents as you want. Maybe it's this one. I'm not sure. There are a lot of them. Yeah, download sitemap generator right here. There are a lot of them actually. Okay. So if you're done, you get something like this. Oh, no, not this one. Sorry. Um, here. Yeah. Okay, it's not done yet. So at the end, you actually get a link. Uh, you get an XML file, I believe. It's been quite a while since I used this tool. And you actually um, load this XML dot um, sitemap.xml file to your website so that the link will be coming will, will become like this xml um, dot xml for example or xml uh, yeah, sitemap.xml okay, and the, then this kind of page will appear and you copy this link and paste it on google search console here okay so from that onwards, then uh, what's the use of this Google Search Console? You can actually find. Now let me just go and demonstrate to you uh, for you. Sign out. Okay. Google search home so and there so this is how it looks like okay this is the report of a performance of how my website ranks on Google so number of total web search clicks I, I got across this period of time okay and you can have more okay let's look at performance there not bad huh so i got an average click to rate of five percent that is very high i mean i'm not boasting but it's, it's 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 true i mean we when you pay for google ads you know those paid ads that you see on top of google uh, search results here i mean getting one percent is extremely good it's extremely difficult, I must say. But getting 5% is very, very difficult because what it means by CTR is actually click through rate. Click through rate. Okay, click through rate. It means it is the rate of when someone searched for Google and when your website appears. The number of times of some of your website appearing on a search results like this and the number of versus the number of times that your your link on your website has been clicked okay so that's number of times you have been clicked divided by number of times that your website appeared on google search results based on certain keywords that's how it works am i confusing now okay for example how to do visual concert see a lot of clicks impressions 400 okay so it's basically divide one to five divided by 400 impressions mean a uh, number of times your website appears when someone searched the keyword how to do virtual concert okay so if you divide this one to five divided by 400 you should get a very high number like this okay now why is it high because i'm rank high on this keyword here okay there if you search more specifically let's say i just let's see set up virtual concert there it ranks number one uh, below the paid ad here all right Okay, and there are other searches, um, other keywords people use to search. As you can see, the keywords are very long, doesn't matter. Okay, 
but because of that i got 2.5 thousand clicks uh this was last three months ago uh, without any work at all i did not even touch the website for the past more than three months i'm still getting traffic okay which is not bad right and then you can see that countries where your people have well, visited your website from google search results here okay and devices and more all right so this is a very useful tool okay um sitemaps i mentioned just now let's, let's say this is a sitemap link um my sitemap link would be this okay if i click let's see if i can click on it no okay all right so i can click on it so i'm just going to drag it out sitemap. So I'm gonna go like onecrowd.com sitemap.xml and you will see this which is this see that so what I did was I just basically just paste that this link here control C Control V and press submit and it will appear here and the last time I submitted this link was February 6th and the last time it was read by Google was September 15th which is very recent and Google found 219 URLs inside this sitemap which he or she has indexed there so you get some error too if you have any errors with your links right Great. So that's how you tell Google about your website. And there are more about other kind of stuff which you don't have to worry about right now. Okay. You can ignore that for now. Um, your inspection. Um, and now you don't have to worry about that. So go ahead and learn about Google Search Console. There are a lot of tutorials online for Google Search Console, I believe. Uh, it's a very useful tool to understand how Google is searching your website or indexing your website. All right now let me see what else i want to share okay one important thing that i'd like to share okay it's is that um you want people to link back to your website it's called uh, one of the ways we, we we do i often do is by using guest posting that's UST guest posting that okay what is guest guest posting is that you actually contribute content or article for other people's website for example okay this is a guest post by me for this website iqmac.net so i wrote this because during that time this is very fitting for that current situation where covid19 just hit a lot of concerts got cancelled got postponed people were starting to think how can i make money from virtual concerts because a lot of people are going to virtual so i actually wrote about this and uh, uh, gladly enough the 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 company uh, the publisher iq mag actually posted this and it eventually links back links back to my website over here you see so guest posting is a very very useful way to create a lot of presence a lot of domain authority a lot of backlinks to your website especially when you are being backlinked from other websites which are more reputable than your website which are more popular than your website now iqmac.net is a very popular website because it talks all about concerts and musical events across the world especially in uk and europe of course in the uh, us now look at the traffic here Okay, not bad for a niche 
um, market like it's a live music intelligent it's a magazine basically about live music it's a business magazine so traffic is not that bad for a very niche market right so when I the only website that is linking back to onecrowd.com is actually this website that's all and we're doing pretty well okay so you want to have other websites to link back to you so the only best way well some people say you can pay for it yeah um, you can some of the websites you can actually pay and um, it, it depends on how much you, you want to pay you want to pay for expensive website it's going to cost you thousands of dollars it's very expensive you want to pay for a cheap website then the websites are not so reputable not so popular not so um, um, trustworthy so Google may not think oh you're, you're you're befriending with websites which are not so um you know, very what do you call that word um very dodgy friends that you have so google may think that here you're pretty dodgy as well so you don't want to link to other less reputable websites okay general website which you can find on fiverr right on fiverr that a lot of people say hey i can link back i can get thousands of links back to your website um seo backlinks i think you know yeah see they can get 45 other links to back links to blue link back to your website um they can get hundreds or whatever for five dollars look at that four thousand and four hundred back links to your website don't believe all these things okay you know it's it's it's, it's well nine dollars you are great forget it 150 links to our dollars they are usually using other general websites for example if you create a, a profile on a website which allows you to add your website link on that website for example uh, let me think of one um, instagram for example instagram um you have a profile on instagram instagram allows you to enter a website link so they're actually doing that they actually post your links uh, on those other websites which allow their members to add a link or a forum for example or um you know uh, uh, um all sorts of funny kind of websites from russian websites to dot us website to those uh, we call that um directory links so forth you don't have to rely on this anymore they don't really work anymore okay you can try them it might hurt your ranking it might not generally i have tried it i have not been hurt i believe okay because i don't do it a lot and it didn't really help what you want is that you want to have someone who are ranked higher than you for example you want to search invisible braces uh, my friend's web company okay invisible braces let's say um friend not friends uk okay and these are all the top ranking websites which are related to invisible braces in UK. The thief block, see it here? So this guy probably blocked a lot about thief or this girl. Okay, small lines of brand. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, now these are all the high ranking websites for this keyword. Okay. So it is a block about thief. Suppose that. All right. Now, if you're in this business and if you're my friend at whitesmileclear.com, you want to be selling um, um, your inv invisible or clear braces to, to UK customers, what I'll do is this. I will go and talk to this guy, this owner of this blog. I will say, hey, I want to contribute articles for your blog. Now let's see who owns this block that you say okay, about us right see this is the owner okay right so you want to go ahead and do that and talk to this person and say hey you know i like your blog i found your blog and i'd like to contribute really good article to your blog I, remember you have, the article has to be good not too promotional has to be like um, um for example um how do you take care of your clear braces uh, um 
best uh how do you compare uh what the the the, the different brands for clear aligners which are transparent or transparent braces um how do you um best five advice before you choose to buy or choose to get a braces how to compare braces between metal ceramic clear so forth and of course those kind of articles are very useful and very informative for this blog's readers and probably she will agree hey yeah you can post it there post on my website and all you have to do is push this on the websites or on the on the articles you just have to write you as the author of the article right below the article probably and just link that uh, um, link that 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 article back to your website yeah so and if he's in if we are still in SEO 1.0, people may argue, hey, you know, that's not going to help because where's the article that I wrote for this website? Okay. Because they're going to say, oh, no, that's not how you do it. You have to link back to your website according to the keyword. So if you just link back your web to your website one crowd like that, and the word that you're linking back is one crowd, not um, um, ticketing online ticketing service, for example. If that's the keyword you like try to target, they're gonna say, "Oh no, it's not gonna work." You have to have the link. You have to use the keyword to link back to your website. Okay. No, nowadays it doesn't really matter. I don't. I mean, I, I, from my experience, I don't think it matters because you see, I'm showing you in front of you right now that this actually works. I'm linking to with my company's name back to my website, not linking a ticketing technology provider back to my website. If this is the keyword I'm trying to target, you see that. So Google is is smart enough nowadays to know what how are you linking back to other websites oh to to yeah to other websites now how about a no follow link do link you know those kind of link the links are okay when you link back to other websites there's always a, this um element here or um, id here or tag here called uh no follow which means that you're trying to tell Google, hey, don't go and index, don't go and follow this link and go and index the other website. In other words, they're not trying to relay that SEO juice to your to your article. Now, let me demonstrate goodforbes.com. If I'm not mistaken, all the links that, that, that Forbes are linking are old no follow links now if i can find no follow so let's find a word follow um no dash to other websites okay now let me just let me just go and try this again let's find any article right now um Let's try here. So what I'm trying to say is during that time, people always say that no follow links are useless. It's not gonna relay a channel that SEO benefits or juice back to your website when you use that. Or when you ask other people to link to your website. Um, let me just find it here. Maybe I have it here. Nope, 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 nope. There, no follow. See that? See that? So the link is Instagram.com slash David, uh, David Phil and Tech. Okay, no follow, no follow. So, but Google, Google, a few years back, there was an article mentioning that Google doesn't really care much about this no follow or do follow link anymore. A link is a link. Okay. 
Uh, so that was 1.0 when dueling and no following uh, make a difference. Nowadays, it doesn't, okay? SEO 2.0 doesn't care whether it's a do link, which is called DO follow link, which is called do follow link and no follow link. Okay, it still will relay some kind of SEO juice. It's still gonna be beneficial for you in terms of your SEO optimization, right? Now, even before in SEO 1.0, we did press releases on those press release websites where we will link, we create a press release and link it all to all the different kind of websites. For example, this press release we did, live crowd wins this one so it was one press release being sent to all the press release websites like 200 websites i believe so what happened uh, was um all the links generally are no follow link just like forbes and uh, what we did was we tracked those link and we tracked our oh, story we tracked the position the ranking of our website based on specific keyword after, before and after we did the press release. So although like hundreds of all those websites are using no follow link. Okay, here. Our ranking actually went up. It didn't jump really high. It actually went up like five places. We were ranked that time. It was a different website. We were ranked like third or fourth or fifth page on Google for a specific keyword. And after we did the press release, we actually jumped up like five or 10 placing, which is still very far at the back, but still it helped a little bit. Okay, okay, so people say, oh no, it's not gonna work. That's not true. People, no one actually can um, really tell you with 100% certainty that this works, that doesn't because nobody actually knows how Google actually uh, runs its algorithm to rank websites. They are not gonna reveal it to you because if they do, everybody's gonna try to game them. So they'll do whatever shit they wanna do to, in order to get your website to be ranked high because they know how Google ranks your websites. So Google, that's the one of the biggest, best kept secret that Google has, just like Coca-Cola, they don't patent, they are formula because they don't want people to know. Okay, so I repeat, do follow, no follow links have uh, no uh, effect or no implication on SEO 2.0, okay? So go ahead and get people to guest post or allow you to do guest posting on the websites. Go for websites which are ranked high for your targeted keyword. For example, invisible braces. Let's say you're targeting invisible braces UK. Okay. Oh, um, so find those websites which are already ranking high for this um, keyword and go and talk to them. Write, for example, five, six articles, or maybe three articles, which you think are very, very good articles, compelling articles. More than 500 words, please. Like 800, 1000 words, 2000 words if you can submit to them, ask them to allow you to guest post on the website. I did that many times over and I have written a lot of guest posts for a lot of websites. I can show you the lists. Um, it actually helps a lot. My writings here. Okay, this one. Um, here, here, all this, here, all this, okay. So, go ahead and do that. And um, if what if you go to iWriter.com to find writers to write for you, or you go to hire writers.com to do that too okay you can hire very affordable writers like this it costs what usually it costs around um, less than ten dollars for one article we're talking about about 500 to 600 words now here's the caveat oh, I forgot my log okay let me try my account here 
Is, okay, I still have it. Okay. Walk in. Our writers are ranked best on their stars, their ratings. Okay. If you want someone that's really cheap, for 500 words, you can hire someone which has um, what, three stars or less for what? Of less than five dollars per article like 500 words and those are really terrible writers okay they could be a high school kid trying to write and this is how it works um, you post an article that you want people to write all the content okay a title of your project um, what kind of article what kind of categories the topic for example let's say it's insurance what is the specific keyword that you want them to write inside the article? For example, let's say um, health insurance, let's say for example, in USA, for example, you can add, okay, um, language, etc. the style, a number of words, of course, how much it will, uh, um, how much, it, it will de de determine your, the cost rather level, just what I'm talking about. Standard is like below three stars, I believe. The more Elite, the, the, the writer that you want, the more expensive it gets. See, 3.3 for this, 500 words. If I select Elite Plus, $39, minimum price. Minimum price. If you go Premium, it's $6. Premium, I think, is like four stars and above. Excuse me. <coughs> elite, $11. I would advise you to go anyway from Premium to above. Okay, I would suggest Elite. Usually I've spent like more than $10 for one article in order to get the kind of quality that Google demands. Okay, then you explain what kind of article you want them to write or difference between, um, let's say for example, explain the difference between different health insurance um, providers in US, for example. Um, how do you want them to write? tone of writing you want them to be creative you want them to be informal business like formal informal journalistic so forth what's your target audience okay do demographic okay what's the objective of you wanting this article to be written is it to inform to educate to motivate to engage entertain so forth okay and more now, once you hit that place order button, what happens is all the members, all the writers were going to go and write an article for you. Let's say, for example, a first person, they say, I'm going to write for you. I'm going to click on the, that, that writing a button, for example. He's going to go and write within that, 24, within that 24 hours. He must write an article and submit it to you. Now, it is your job to reject or approve that article. I repeat, you have the right to reject or approve the article. If you don't like the writing at all, we can reject it or you can ask him to rewrite. There are two options. Okay, accept, reject, or rewrite. Now, if you get a really horrible article which went off the topic, for example, with really bad grammar or whatever, you can always reject them. Now, here's a catch. If you always reject articles, when um, you post an article to be written, there will be an indication there to say that how many times that you had rejected articles before. So if I'm a writer, I say, hey, this guy rejected like 10, 20 articles before. Chances are he might reject my article. So I'm not going to spend my time just to pitch my article to him. It's not going to work, so they're going to say, forget it. So you're not going to get a lot of article, uh, people writing for you. You're only going to get those bad writers if you are selecting those standard writers, okay? And sometimes um, you, okay, now you can actually, um, let me see. Okay, the more keywords you put in, the more how you have to pay. So if you select like premium, okay, or okay, see here, you can actually select uh, enter your minimum price that you're willing to pay. Uh, let's, let's say for example, I'm willing to pay fifteen dollars for premium uh, rider, 
And chances are people are gonna wanna write for you because you're putting a high price for it, right? If you put it lower, then you get a lot of monkeys that couldn't even write properly who want to write for you because those are beginner writers, okay? So always go for premium or above, okay? Uh, how much you wanna give for an article really depends on your experience. I would go for at least this nowadays because Google likes long quality content. We'll go for maybe this or this so $20 perhaps or minimum is 2025 so yeah the price will probably be around this if you don't mind you can go for premium which is 1150 like that okay now now that's how it works for i writer so you can accept or reject if you accept of course you accept the article you get paid i mean you, you pay the uh, writer to write reject if you reject the article, you're gonna get another next person who will be willing to write for you. Again, if you reject them, you can the process repeats itself over and over until you're satisfied. Excuse me. From my experience, that you don't always reject, you ask them to be right. Sometimes the articles are so bad, you have no choice but to reject them. You can have private messaging, okay? There's a private messaging soft uh, feature for this website. You can talk. You can talk to that. Oh, you do I know about Canonical? Yes, I do. Um, where was the question? Uh, yes, no, no, how do you pronounce your name? No edge cube. Okay. Yes, I do. Um, in what context? I need to know. I can give you a demonstration. A demonstration of con what's Canonical um, link is about. I always forget the real meaning of canonical link, uh, but here's a demonstration. Medium.com. Go to medium.com and uh, this question was posted to me before. The people were asking me, should I create my own blog for my company's website or should I use medium.com to to be my comp to create my company's um, uh, blog site? So let's just say I create, you can create publications down here and on Medium. You can create a new publication for your company's, um, as a company's blog, for example, um, White Smile Clear blog. Okay, and I'll post all the articles about White Smile Clear inside this, inside this um, publication. And I'm gonna write for all my blogs on this publication too. I'll give you an example, Asia Business Matters, which is a publication I created without any association or affiliation with any websites that I have. It's just a publication I created here on, uh, on just recently on uh, Medium. But some of the articles are actually originally written for other websites. Now, let me just show you. Yeah, how about this one? No. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna repeat myself. Um, I'm just gonna return to all the publications that I did. Uh, sorry, all the stories that I wrote, published. So let's look at. Okay, this one just got rejected, blah, blah, blah. No, not this one, sorry. Um, okay. Why paper tickets will be with us for many years to come? Okay. This content or this article originally was published on my website here. This article was first published at this link. So, Oh, it has disappeared apparently. It actually has changed to .com, which I did not update it. So I what I did was I actually wrote all my blog posts on my website and Okay, now I'm just gonna go and find, okay, let's try link here. Um, okay, let's just say I, I wrote this article. No, 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 okay. Five common mistakes when running virtual events. Okay, 
I wrote this, I actually wrote this, copy this link. I will copy this entire article and I will create a new story here based on that article. Same article, everything's the same, photo is the same. In the bottom, I'll just, I'm just gonna say, um, for the sake of um, clarity, uh, this article was published at this link, which is this. Now, I will post it first on my blog site here. After a week or two, I will then go to Medium and post it on Medium. Now, here's the important part. Oh, I need to do some work here first. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, maybe I'm just gonna. Okay, let me, okay now, great. So go to more settings. Okay, leave. Medium actually allows you to create a canonical link back to your original link. Okay, this story was originally published elsewhere. It is, is yes or no? Okay, it is, is yes, I'm gonna check here. And I'm gonna enter this link copy, paste here, and save it. So what you're trying to do here is you're trying to tell Medium that, hey, this article was originally published somewhere else. You're just syndicating it, so-called, um, that same article on Medium. And I'm gonna, for example, I can go ahead and copy this down, all the way down here. Copy, copy, let's go paste there and I'm gonna write the same thing that I, what I always write at the bottom so once this is published you will get a link you not your link you will basically tell telling Google or media will tell medium will tell Google that this article was originally published canonical how do you spell canonical again canonical 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 there so you have a tag a html tag like this telling canonical link on duplicate content right, right. canonical link on duplicate content is mandatory like about my form no it's not um sorry i don't really get what you're trying to say but um yes canonical link the purpose of having canonical link is to prevent duplicate content so if you're posting the same content across different websites, there should be a canonical link on each of those posting to indicate that where is the original content of this post. Um, I'm actually demonstrating it to you here. So the original article link is actually this one, which is this. Okay, where was I? Okay, so the me medium.com actually is telling Google when Google come and search and index this page, he's telling Google, hey Google, actually this is not an original um, content. The original content is actually, my phone keep popping up every time I say, okay, Google. <laughs> this is so funny. All right, um, so, uh, so, so, so Medium is telling Google, hey, uh, the original link to this content is actually here. So Google knows that, hey, uh, this is the original uh, 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 original uh, content, original topic, or original article for this uh, link, uh, basically for this, for this article. So what happens is if when Google, assuming that you are posting, I'm posting, I'm going to post this article on 10 other websites, right? And when someone searched and Google will only find, will only show, will only um, display one website or one article, one of these articles, not especially the first article. So Google will definitely rank this article better than the rest of the article because this is the original article. The rest are just copies or duplicate copies of that similar article. So when you search, for example, press release, same content, same press release you sent to 300 other websites, there should be one original article for that press release. So far, so good. 
Am I answering your question? Mr. Um, or uh, no, how do you pronounce that? No edge cube. Okay, I hope I am. That's about canonical link. Okay, so it, it gets a bit confusing. I'm going to repeat myself. Canonical link is a link that tell that tells um, this is the link canonical link which is the link this link this is a canonical link which tells Google where is the location of the original content okay so this is a copy this is the skeleton of that copy no wait why people okay um okay never mind so this is the original let me see if this works yeah it works see so this is a copy of this all right so medium.com has a tag inside the article which is this telling Google that the original content for this article is actually located here which is which is this so how do you do that in medium is you go to the article you go to more settings the copied article the duplicated article then you go to advanced settings then you go click on advanced settings menu scroll down and check this paste that original link and save it okay right let's move forward uh where was i okay um no follow do follow i think we covered that um guest posting I think we covered that as well hey um, 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 I think we covered a lot of things a lot of things already it's already 2 22 um, a.m. in Korea right now so I hope I've been helpful oh okay uh, we were talking about iWriter right okay now another website that you can use is actually hirewriters.com it's the same as iWriter basically they are like sister websites uh, prices are for more or less the same as well but sometimes you I think there are more writers on iWriters.com compared to HireWriters.com from my experience let me see the traffic okay this is how the traffic is about below 100k then we go to iWriter so iWriter is doing much better has more traffic than higher writers so you can use iWriter first if you don't get your good don't get good articles from there you can go and jump to higherwriters.com all right and you can pay using paypal i think so yeah you can check the pricing here so that's how you get people to write articles for you to guest post on other people's websites best is that if you can write it yourself or get someone in your company to write it for you because you know the topic better these writers may not know that well about what your product or what your company is doing so sometimes the quality of the content may not be in line with what you want all right that's the often problem that I found uh, from um, writers or you can always pick topic right sometimes you can get writers who are very good in certain topics like um, computers and technology, uh, internet, business, insurance, finance, relationship, love, um, boyinger girl relationship, self improvement, so forth. So some writers are very specialized in certain topics, certain categories like sports, for example, soccer, basketball, football. Okay. Right. Um. That's it for today. And as as I promised, the template. I'm going to upload the template right now. I'm going to post the link on the live chat. Uh, I'm just gonna try to find my okay my window. Hey, where you? Could please stay around. Um, if you have more questions, go ahead and post it. I need to log back in.
Okay, yeah, let me just switch this off. All right. So I'm um, now. If you have any questions that you want to ask, go ahead and ask. Um, other than that, otherwise, I'm just gonna upload this. PowerPoint template, which I promised to share with you guys. And I will think you will find it very useful. Okay. Um, all right, just gonna show you again what am I uploading. This is the template. Here it has lots and lots of nice and cool looking diagrams that you can always reuse. Okay, for your own purposes. Okay. Now I'm just gonna upload it. All right, so let's close this first. Okay, here you go, upload. Okay, it will take less than a minute. All right, so if you have any questions, please ask. If you don't, I will, I hope to be online again at the same time tomorrow. Hopefully earlier because I just completed my 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 preaching preaching session session just now. Um okay, you should get a shareable link. Okay. Copy the link. Done. Okay. Link to free. Present link to SEO presentation slides. Okay. Okay. Nooch web, Nooch cube. You are asking if the article is .fr, blah, blah, blah. I keep the same URL as canonical. Um, not sure what you mean. Uh, if the article is I keep the same URL as canonical. Yes, if .fr slash 111, my first blog, is your original content, original article, and you are reposting the same article to um, abcwebsite.com slash 111 dash my first blog, same URL except for domain name, that um second the copy of that content which is at abc.com should have a canonical link attack in the html to link back to dot fr slash 111 my first block it doesn't really matter the link whether it's it has to be the same the content uh, has to be the same and that Canonical link has to be embedded inside the other copies of your original article. Am I making sense here? It took me a while to understand this, to be honest, because it's, it's, the relative part is very difficult. Who links to who? Okay, canonical link is placed, the, the, the tag is placed at the copies of your content, not at your source content. Okay, not at the original article. You place the link at the many copies of your articles so that these copies link back to your original copy. Remember, canonical is linking from copy to original, copy to original, copy to source, okay? I hope that's clear. I've posted that slides that you can download, it's PPT format. Uh, it's really good slide I can use. Hopefully it'll be useful to you as it is to me. That's all for today. I need to call it a night here in South Korea. Hopefully tomorrow I'll see you guys again. 
Please guys, if you like what you're watching, please subscribe, please like, please comment, please give me more questions that you want to ask. I love to getting questions actually. I like people to be active and busy enough to ask me questions. Another one coming up from Nudge Cube. Does it mean Cognitical is a major solution for res to for resolve to resolve SEO issues about duplicate content? Yes. Well, it doesn't matter whether it's a major solution. It is a solution that's been used, implemented by Google. Okay. So yes. Any more questions? Anyone? Nudge Cube? If you have, please fire away. Oh, uh, let's just stick around for another five minutes or so. Um, any other things you want to discuss? Please subscribe to my content, which wherever you're watching from, uh, whether it's Twitch, YouTube, Periscope, um, Africa TV. I'm on all these platforms. I'm actually using um, Restream.io. I'm not endorsing them and they're not paying me to use this. I'm just using it for the first. This is my third time using it. And it actually, it actually broke when I was trying to schedule my this uh, this this stream actually. So I'll try to fix that problem in my next stream tomorrow. All right. So I guess no more questions. Thank you so much for your questions, uh, Nudge Cube. You're from Twitch. Oh yeah, I can see that. All right, great. I hope I have been helpful to you guys. If you have more questions about anything online business, um, SEO, email marketing, content marketing, I've done there, been there, done that lots of times, been through hell and back. So please, I have a lot to share. You want to learn from me? Please ask questions. What you want to learn in the next um, streams, let me know as well. Okay, it's all free, hopefully, for now. All right, thank you so much for your time and have a good day and have a good night.